Yeah, it finally happened. Elon Musk first revealed details about Starship Flight 3 at a SpaceX company talk on January 11th. So how exactly will Flight 3 play out? How close is SpaceX to its upcoming flight? SpaceX Starship's development speed has been snowballing. As Ellen said, the goal was not to blow the pad up and ideally get some distance. Then on Flight 2, they aimed to pass hot stage separation. It was the first time this technology was applied to a rocket on this scale. Yeah, finally they succeeded. The success of the hot staging has paved the way for Ship 25's close orbit approach. So on Flight 3, why not dream of reaching orbit? Elon Musk at the SpaceX company talk on January 11 stated, And then Flight, uh, flight 3, we've got, uh, well, we want to get to orbit and we want to do uh, an, an in-space uh, engine burn uh, from the header tank and, and prove uh, the, that we can rel reliably deorbit. We want to do a tipping point uh, header domain uh, propellant transfer. Uh, this is uh, important for the uh, NASA Artemis program, and uh, we want to also demonstrate the, the payload door for the sort of PES dispenser for um, delivering the Starlink, the, the V2 non-mini, actually probably V, I guess V3 technically. It can be said that compared to last year's tests, Starship's third integrated flight test this year promises to consist of more milestones. First, let's get into orbit. I think with current progress combined with the experience and skills of the Starship team, this milestone is completely achievable. Referring to the reason causing Starship's explosion in the November event, Elon explained that SpaceX had to vent excess oxygen out of the ship. Testing new rockets typically sees companies use a mass simulator for a payload to simulate flight conditions, and Musk added that the explosion could have been avoided had SpaceX used an actual payload for orbital delivery. Maybe SpaceX will equip Ship 28 with a real payload during Flight 3 to avoid the explosion risk? Yes, it's possible. This leads to the next work is to demonstrate the payload door for the sort of PE dispenser that is designed to deliver Starlink. Does it mean that we will see the deployment of Starlink in orbit in the upcoming flight test? Yes, a 99% chance of happening. You know, back on December 20, 2023, we saw Ship 28's payload bay, which looks like the PE dispenser. That bay experienced a test and showed a positive result. Therefore, I bet my money on Starlink will be the payload for the February test. The third one is about an in-space engine burn from the header tank. Prior to the bay test, Ship 28 was also tested static fire for the second time. A single Raptor engine at that point was ignited to demonstrate a flight-like startup for an in-space burn. Such burns are typically conducted to maneuver a rocket in space or control its direction during descent. A loss of control during descent can often mean an uncontrollable rocket whose final destination is hard to predict. This test is similar to the test of Ship 26 deorbit burn on October 20, 2023. Given that, the company also briefly ignited one of the six Raptor engines on its Ship 26 Starship prototype. Deorbit burns and other engine firings will allow Starship vehicles to return safely to Earth after liftoff. Through recent updates, Elon Musk hinted that there would be a re-entry test of Ship 28 in Flight 3. What goes up must come down, right? SpaceX will likely continue to let Ship 28 splash down the ocean like its predecessors. Because at present, no signal shows that Mechazilla's catching test will come soon. The construction of a second tower at Starbase has not been kicked off yet. Elon Musk just talked about the next stage of the Starship program was two towers at the end of 2023, and the arrival of the second tower segments has just been captured since last November. Clearly, it's so risky to use the only operational launch pad for the mid-air catching test. An in-space engine burn from Starship's header tank is one of multiple tests in preparation for the Artemis Moon program, in addition to on-orbit refueling. Elon Musk confirmed in his recent presentation that SpaceX would demonstrate propellant transfer from the header tank to the main tank. This has removed all rumors that there would not be a propellant transfer test in Flight 3. 
According to NASA, Starship could attempt a 10-ton internal transfer of extremely cold liquid oxygen propellant from one tank to another on its next Starship launch. On its next Starship launch, the test is part of SpaceX's 2020 $53 million tipping point contract and requires the company to demonstrate the cryogenic tank-to-tank -tank fuel transfer to provide insights for larger vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle transfers, a key capability needed for its lunar lander to ferry Artemis astronauts to the moon. Next, before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. However, Elon Musk did not mention when the Starship would fly for the third time. So, we can implicitly understand that SpaceX remained faithful to the target launch date of February. That means that Starship will be ready for launch in January in terms of hardware and an FAA approval will come in one month later. So how close is SpaceX to its goal? After both Flight 3 vehicles concluded their successful test campaigns, they were returned to the production site for last-minute modifications and thorough checks before their scheduled flight. The final checks encompass a spectrum from routine avionics and valve operations, checks to potential last-minute additions or modifications to the booster based on lessons learned from Flight 2. Moving to the orbital tank farm on January 9th, GSE-8, one of the eight vertical tanks which were located a few meters away from the launch tower was unexpectedly airborne. Then it was swiftly cut into pieces. This action could signal a shift away from the current use of vertical tanks, which was something many had anticipated. The vertical tanks could indeed be considered one of SpaceX's notable missteps. They present several challenges, including hurdles related to methane certification, restrictions on water filling, and their proximity to the launch pad. In contrast, the forthcoming implementation of horizontal tanks will see them enclosed and shielded by reinforced concrete barriers, potentially addressing these issues more effectively. Nothing worth a surprise if all the tanks were scrapped before the third Starship flight to avoid any damage in that area in future launches. The removal of vertical tanks left a burning question. Will this work impact the third Starship test campaign? The answer is no. We know that out of the eight tanks present at the tank farm, there are two water tanks that are part of a large heat exchange system similar to the self-pressurizing capability on the booster and the ship. It pressurizes five vertical cold tanks and seven horizontal cold tanks within the farm. The elimination of vertical tanks might aim to make room for the installation of a new vaporization system that takes responsibility for sending vaporized nitrogen, oxygen, and methane back to the cryogenic storage tanks to replace the fluid as it is being rapidly pumped out. Thanks to that, the storage tanks can be prevented from collapsing. Not only that, but the addition of vaporizers also would benefit the pumping rate of both liquid oxygen and liquid methane into the ship and booster within the context of SpaceX's plans to expand its orbital tank farm. In 2023's middle, SpaceX kicked off expanding its propellant loading capacity at the orbital tank farm. The expansion includes the addition of liquid oxygen pumps and subcoolers. Thus, as pump capacity increases, more vaporizers are needed. So far, the process is nearly complete as the pumps are respectively installed. The ultimate hurdler is about the FAA's license, but it does not matter. Part of that is closing out the corrective actions from Flight 2. Um, we're on track for that. We're working closely, so we're expecting that license to come in February. Essentially, hardware preparations for Flight 3 are almost complete, and this signals the feasibility of SpaceX's February target. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time. To see